two, ready, play. Hello! Welcome to worship today. I'm so glad you can join us. Today is a special service and it's near and dear to my heart and that's why you're seeing me today. My name is Josh Heyriggs, the Director of Youth and Education here at Redeemer Lutheran Church. Today, this first Sunday after Christmas, we're going to be blessed by 41 of Redeemer students sharing the gospel with you. And their words are directly from scripture and they help us today to see how God's promises come true for us. God promised long ago through his prophets that he would come to save us. And today we are reminded that Jesus born as a baby, that is that long awaited promise has finally come true. He came to save you. So as we start worship today, can you open with a word of prayer with me and let's be blessed by our students sharing God's word with us. Let's pray. Lord God, your promises are true, and you show that in a big way by sending Jesus to take our place as a sacrifice for our sins. As your kids lead us in worship, bless their efforts to proclaim your gospel of Christmas today. Amen. Matthew chapter 1, this is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant with the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet didn't want to expose her to the public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived is her and is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. You are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. 
The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. I gave him a lion Jesus. Chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel.
Nazan Rest two. The people walking in darkness they saw a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. Okay, go. He will reign on David's wall. And over his kingdom... Establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Micah 5, verse 1. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, but though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are of old from ancient times. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, and a, des a, a descendant, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, This is your holy 
behave in the world with, with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words. She wondered what kind of greetings there might be, but the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. I am the Lord's servant, Mary Andrew. May the word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in, Nazareth in Galilee to Ju Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and, old, and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married him, to him, and he was expecting a, a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there is no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. Was all the fox life at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. 
suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go into Bethlehem and see this thing that the Lord has told us about. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. start by saying good morning Jesus just as we always do so say it with me good morning Jesus now I have a couple of props with me because as I was thinking about the the theme for for today um, as we are, are walking through the the promises of God in the Old Testament and then the way that that is fulfilled so miraculously, so amazingly by the coming of Jesus in human flesh when he came as a baby. And uh, I, I was thinking, um, you know, all of those promises are like building blocks. And that got me thinking because I love building blocks. I don't know if any of you kids out there who are watching or grandparents or parents, if you love this, but I love building towers with my kids. Now, to be fair, when we build towers, uh, when the kids were younger especially, they would love to build them up and then they would come over and whoop, smack them down. They loved to destroy it. But part of it was also just the sheer joy of building something up. Maybe it was as high as it could go or maybe you were building it into a specific shape or, or idea. And I thought, you know what? That is so much like this theme that we are going through, are walking through today, that, that the children are leading us through, that um, God promised that he will come. And he has. And God promised that he would come in a very specific way 
We know that. And each of those promises is like a, a building block, right? We know that first and foremost, God promised that uh, he would give us a ruler, somebody uh, that we could trust that would be in charge of our lives, that could uh, help us and guide us and lead us, that he himself would be that person that would come and lead us and guide us. And of course, then we know that um, one of the promises that, that God gave us a long time ago was that he was going to come as a baby, that there was going to be a son who was born, and he was going, oh, the light is kind of bright there, but he was going to be born, and he was going to um, ride into uh, Jerusalem on a donkey. We know that Mary, uh, she rode uh, on a donkey, perhaps, uh, with Joseph as they traveled to Bethlehem. Um, we know that Jesus was born in a stable surrounded by other animals. And God promised that this ruler, this baby, would, this bright and morning star uh, would be born. And then uh, God would lead the, the magi to, uh, to the, the baby with a star. And that's exactly what he did. And all of those promises, God kept adding, God kept uh, giving to us um, because he knew we needed a king. He knew we needed a savior. Um, we needed somebody who would rescue us, who would help us, um, who would rescue us from sin. And um, so he, he kept promising uh, that he would come. And each and every promise that we hear about in the Old Testament is like a building block that God is using to paint a picture for us, to lead us to see that he was really promising Jesus, right? J E S U S, Jesus. And he was promising Jesus to be the Savior for all people, to rescue all people from their sin. It's almost like he was saying, you know how we have a TV and we can see something that somebody else can see all the way across the country for all people. This message of great joy because Jesus is born and Jesus is with us and Jesus forgives us and he loves us would go for all people. And then you know what? We've got a train here because God also promises us that we will pass on this message of love, this message of Jesus, this message that our Savior is with us. So just like this train, we can go. Go to all people and tell them, and look at the shape of this building, of what I built. It's the shape of a cross. Ultimately, that's what God was leading towards. Every promise of God was leading towards him sending his son, Jesus Christ, who would grow up to die on a cross to save us. And how awesome is it that we know that whether we're young or old, whether we're a boy or a girl, it doesn't matter whether you like sports or you like to read. All of us are children of God. We are loved by him. We are loved by Jesus. And we can share that love with others. Out of the mouths of babes, I hope that you are blessed by this journey through uh, the Old Testament prophecy is this journey through God's promise to send Jesus, to send a Savior, to send a King. Um, and then uh, that we are blessed in this celebration together as we hear that story out of the mouths of babes. Amen.
land will be glad the wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus it will burst into bloom it will rejoice greatly and shout for joy the glory of lebanon will be given to it the splendor of carmel and sharon they will see the glory of the lord the splendor of our god strengthen the feeble hands Study the needs that give way, and say to those with fearful hearts. Be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. 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 Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lamb leap like a deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground a bubbling spring. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass, reeds, and papyrus will grow. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The, the unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there, and those the Lord rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away.